Um, my name, as John, uh, Jonathan said, is Tom Day. Uh, first of all, I just want to um, shout out Car Projects and uh, Jonathan and Gabby for um, having me, allowing for me to show in this space, um, giving me um, the platform to exhibit my work and be able to, you know, talk to all of you and um, give you a little bit more of an introduction as to you know, who I am, what my work represents, uh, where I am right now in life, um, why I make the things that I do, and um, give you a little backstory, I guess, as to how I got into um, pushing paint onto canvas. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so uh, I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana, on the northeast side uh, in a suburb called uh, Lawrence Township. Um, at a very young age, I was uh, drawing and doodling, watching a lot of television, um, and copying what I saw on TV onto pieces of printer paper, usually with uh, pens, pencils, whatever I could find, markers. Um, and uh, yeah, this is one of my earliest pieces that actually my dad found recently and sent it to me. Um, I was drawing. I was drawing a lot of superheroes. I was really fascinated with the the concept of what it meant to be uh, a hero. And um, even though it was kind of fantastical, um, kind of gave me this this sense of power to do the right thing, uh, to uh, look within myself and take action uh, to make the world better. Uh, I think in the most simplest terms. So. You know, as you can see, it has a nice 12 pack there and uh, <laughs> some nice uh, oversized uh, arms and legs. And, uh, but at, at this early age, my parents saw that I really enjoyed making art. Um, they really helped set a path for me to succeed in the arts, which is um, unfortunately kind of rare, I feel like, in most, um, most of Western society especially. So allowing for me to learn how to draw at a very young age uh, through private uh, lessons was kind of a way that they wanted to encourage me. I'm forever thankful for that because otherwise, I don't know where I'd be. Um, so I'm super thankful for that. Um, jumping ahead quite a bit. Didn't really have too much of the in-between at my disposal, but I uh, found this uh, right after I made a Facebook um, I was sharing a lot of my work on Facebook uh, early ages, probably 12, 13, 14 years old. I believe I was 14 or 15 when I did this portrait of Michael Jordan. Um, I grew up really enjoying sports. I loved um, the prominence that sports figures had in society and in media and in culture and the contributions that they added to the world monetarily, culturally, um, et cetera. And I actually took this with the webcam that we have plugged into our PC uh, computer. So I, you know, at a very young age, super, super good at documenting my work <laughs> in the most uh, prominent ways. As I entered high school, um, I met a lot of new people. I transitioned from a middle school from where I was born and raised to a high school that was downtown Indianapolis. This uh, kind of started opening, you know, my horizons to people from different places, uh, backgrounds, experiences. This also allowed me to connect to people that I otherwise wouldn't have. Um, around this time, I really felt like I was kind of getting into doing work digitally. I kind of have a, a fascination of that at a pretty young age. When you are a kid and you're seeing commercials, for drawing tablets that can you know, plug into your parents' laptop and you can draw on it while you're looking on the screen. It was super fascinating to me. And I don't know why, but I absolutely fell in love with drawing and illustrating digitally around this time. Uh, so I, I had a couple of pieces. I was in a couple of art classes in, in high school. And my art teachers, uh, especially the one in high school, was really encouraging to this new kind of found medium. 
the digital media around this time, I felt like started to become more and more readily available for anyone that wanted to kind of like delve into it, figure out how to use it, and you know make work of them their own. And I was really interested in watching YouTube tutorials on uh, drawing with Photoshop. Couldn't afford Photoshop, but I had uh, the free Autodesk Sketchbook Express that uh, came along with this Wacom tablet uh, in 2012. So it was a really big day. I got to go to Best Buy and pick it out and kind of start experimenting with some things. So super, super cool. And it was a way that I felt like I could make friends like in high school in a way that didn't feel, like it just felt like really at home for me. I think I really struggled in like middle school and high school to like make friends and using my artwork as an avenue to like make some sort of connection with somebody was really special uh, now that I kind of like look back on it. Um, so yeah, this is a friend of mine from high school named Christian. And yeah, super cool guy. He makes music now. Um, this is a part of an AP uh, advanced placement art class portfolio. Uh, when I was, I believe, yeah, I was a sophomore in high school. I grew up loving drawing cartoons, and I kind of excelled in that in high school. It was kind of like my main thing. I did a lot of cartoon drawing in high school with uh, kind of going back to my roots of using that ballpoint pen and printer paper or mixed media paper, for instance. And this is one of the first pieces that kind of sparked the, my concentration series in high school. We we're supposed to kind of like pick a subject, pick a medium, um, create a, a body of cohesive work to kind of uh, not only show on the other half of our portfolio our breadth, but also the uh, this half of our portfolio where we were able to you know take a topic and concentrate on it. So this was kind of the first time I felt like I was figuring out what it meant to make something that meant something or kind of how to play on itself. Um, I hadn't really entirely done that before. I would do a little comics here and there, but this was a, kind of a stationary idea that I felt like I was able to, you know, take this idea of elderly people and then mix in this like youthful twist to it. So it kind of went from here of this old man feeling himself in the changing room dancing to like someone drive it a convertible with like a young lady in the you know front seat and the cops are chasing behind them um, to somebody trying to figure out like a uh, like new technology from his you know dark home um, so this is probably one of my favorite pieces i did in high school i absolutely adore it it kind of like kind of branded you know the rest of what i thought i wanted to do you know Throughout college, I, I knew I was like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, an illustrator, um, cartoonist, that sort of thing. But that kind of changed a little bit. So I uh, went to Heron School of Art and Design in Indianapolis, and midway through my sophomore year, I decided to take a painting class, painting one. This is past that because you know, painting one and two were mostly boring, and still lives. Uh, but it really allowed me to kind of start using the medium of oil paint and kind of navigate what that looks like as it was completely different from using a pen and paper to try to, you know, depict what I wanted to depict. Um, around this time, I was a part of a, uh, a ministry where I would go to a local high school, mentor kids, um, take them uh, to and from, you know, Bible study, for instance, or to something we call club, which is essentially just music and pizza, and just kind of an after-school program. Uh, this is one of the kids that I met through that program. His name's Kevon, and he gracefully um, allowed me to do a portrait of him uh, on the street they lived on. Um, this also helped kind of influence my understanding of my place in society, um, my understanding of kind of people from different backgrounds, and kind of made me, it kind of opened my eyes to some of the disparities between certain communities in my city. And from that kind of spurted this, 
this collection of work that I did, this is one of the pieces that I did. It is a map of Indianapolis. Uh, the neighborhoods are um, still kind of redlined to this day, um, redlining using um, legislation to only accept certain families into certain houses, depending on their race, essentially. So generationally, a lot of these places didn't allow certain people in certain areas of town. And I started to recognize through the ministry I was doing that a lot of the neighborhoods that I was visiting looked very different than my own. This series kind of uh, spurred a little bit more of a deep dive into social issues, um, racial injustice, and um, what I can kind of self-reflect and navigate through my own kind of privileged perspective. Um, and this is, these colors are a little bit arbitrary just in terms of choice, but they do represent certain communities that are segregated by highways and large roads in uh, the city of Indianapolis and hasn't changed that much. It's taken a very long time to even make a, you know, deep dive into, you know, ending the residual and negative effects of redlining. This is a cool opportunity that I had in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Um, I was reached out to by the Seattle Seahawks to do the uh, portraits for the draft for all three of those years. So players that got drafted to the NFL from college, I was able to do these portraits for their social media, their website, other forms of media. And that was a really cool opportunity that I felt um, super honored to do. Um, and as a sports fan, I was super, super excited to kind of accept that as, uh, as a project. So this is one of the portraits I did uh, in 2020. Uh, Jordan Brooks was the first round uh, pick that the uh, Seahawks drafted. So it was just a really cool opportunity. I like couldn't pass up like putting it into the like, I was like, oh, it's like, it's a cool thing that I feel like I have under my belt. So I wanted to share. Um, this is a part of the show that I had in 2022 at the Athenaeum in downtown Indianapolis. I did paint it during 2019-2020 uh, during the remaining years of the Trump administration. Um, I really wanted to use my work to kind of self-reflect on our nation as a whole in terms of its immigration, uh, seeking after change, reform, um, figuring out what ways I can depict the problems in order to at least bring some sort of light on what I was seeing going down at, um, at the US border. Um, lots of inhumane and animalistic ways of treating human beings spurred a couple of pieces, this one being one of them, as a kind of a catalyst to propel me back into doing more work with deeper and unfortunately closer rooted conceptual lines. Um, the QR code goes to a nonprofit in the state of Georgia that helps um, migrants with food, shelter, medicine, um, the immigration process because it is an insane process. And I was kind of inspired, I was listening to this artist named What Up RG, he's a, he's a rapper, and he has a song called 4 AM that talks about the day that his father was deported for driving people to church without a license. Um, and so this, is, this again kind of spurred a recentering of kind of where I wanted some of my work to go and helped, I guess, navigate where I am today. Um, this is another piece that I made around that time. Um, I was really big on finding reference images by using social media, which is kind of funny, uh, considering my current day show. But I was really captured by this image uh, that I wanted to use as reference. And uh, the person in the image accepted that you know I could do a painting of her. And it was kind of one of the bigger moments where I started using digital media more prevalently, um, almost always. 
And uh, I don't know, I found, I found a really, I, I love the ability to draw digitally, but I found that I felt a little self-conscious surrounding the stigma around where digital work is now. I knew that like in a fine art setting, it was kind of like a really, like a long shot for me to succeed when using this media. And so I kind of had the idea, which I guess is just the next step of getting these images printed on canvas, shipped to my place, and then painting on top of them. So this is like one of the pieces that I married those two media together that really kind of gave me a sense of direction in terms of where I wanted my media to go in my work. So um, yeah, it was a, one of my favorite pieces. I gave it to one of my friends in Indianapolis and it's hanging in their kitchen. Right? This is a piece that I did during um, or on the second half of the Black Lives Matter protests, um, I kind of wanted to, I started to realize that a lot of the black square posting on social media was just a way for, in all honesty, to make white people feel good about an issue, um, while going back to you know whatever they were doing. Um, I feel like in a lot of times in my own life, I've been guilty of that, where um, maybe I subconsciously virtue signal on an issue or talk about it as a way that you know doesn't necessarily affect me or um, kind of obfuscate my stance on an, an issue that honestly is plaguing you know fellow Americans, uh, fellow people in the world. And so this was kind of a self-reflection, it was a self-portrait that I did to kind of depict myself holding up the fist of power while having my fingers crossed behind my back. Um, it was kind of difficult to just come up with the idea, but I knew that it was something that I wanted to do to at least kind of, maybe just for myself, to keep myself feeling accountable, um, to speak on issues that, you know, are that I hold dear and that I feel close to. This is also uh, a non-digital drawing, so I can draw a pencil everybody. I just wanted to let you guys know. Um, uh, I did a couple of pieces uh, in graphite for this show in uh, 2022 in the afternoon. This is a piece that um, almost made it into this show. Uh, we kind of ran out of space in the gallery, but it holds pretty heavy significance to kind of how I was feeling surrounding certain events happening in 2021, 2022. Um, I really wanted to explore the intersectionality of Christianity, nationalism, and the obsession of the United States military industrial complex and firearms. Um, cited in scripture, the powerful state of Rome placed a crown of thorns on Jesus' head as a mockery, hail the king of the Jews. Similarly, Modern conservative Christians seem to be all consumed with firearms, the crown being made out of automatic assault rifles, acts as a way to kind of call out that hypocrisy of the modern Christian faith, especially in the West, as violence is the absolute antithesis of Jesus' teachings. This piece really meant a lot to me in terms of its own, I guess, significance with where I stood with my frustrations um, surrounding certain, <laughs> certain events, mass shootings, um, the inability to pass any sort of gun safety legislation in this country is beyond embarrassing. And this work was instrumental in my own life to be able to, to share my thoughts on that. Um, this kind of circles back a little bit to the previous painting I did. It was actually printed on something called lenticular. Um, lenticular prints are basically kind of like a layered um, print of plastic uh, that had two different images on, um, on the same plane. It's kind of hard to describe, but essentially you can look at it from one side, see one image, and look at it from the other side and see another image. And uh, this piece kind of called into question this idea of fabricating 
a Jesus in our history and culture and modern day society and the modern church that kind of fits a certain narrative. I always felt growing up in the Catholic church, seeing white Jesus kind of equals perfection. So I kind of equated that with like whiteness equals perfection because our, our Jesus is always depicted as a white man, even though he was Middle Eastern Jew. Um, and so while you can't really see um, this, essentially the silhouette of, of Jesus here um, changed colors depending on which way you looked at it, two different images, both Caucasian and Middle Eastern Jew. It was the first time I had ever done anything with lenticular, and if it weren't so gosh darn expensive, I would probably do more. Um, it was very, it was a very hefty price tag to get this um, done, but it was a fun project, and yeah, I, I want to do more someday. This is a piece that's in the show um, titled King. I took uh, the foreground of a 20th century lynching uh, from the 1930s uh, in my home state of Indiana and paired it with Jesus on the cross. The, the strange thought that I had when creating this work was how People in the early uh, 1900s and late 1800s uh, valued human life so differently and secularly. And I really wanted to kind of depict this hypocrisy as I felt like amongst the murder of Ahmaud Arbery and the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, in a lot of ways, these systems that seemed, you know, ancient, like crucifixion and lynchings that should be ancient history, kind of have similar parallels and are just happening under different light today. Um, it was really interesting. I used the foreground image that I found on Google that I felt most fit the, the, just the general composition of the image. And then after the fact, actually learned it was from my home state of Indiana. Um, mm -hmm. So really interesting. It felt like it was kind of made to be, um, and kind of in the background, you can't really see it on this image because of the marrying of the two media. But up in the upper left-hand corner, I have stars, and in the upper right-hand corner, I have the clouds creating stripes um, to call notice to the American flag, how this happens over and over and over again. There's a piece also in the show. Um, I'm kind of, at this point, I made this last year, kind of approaching current day conceptual interests, uh, mostly with social media. Uh, there's an app called Be Real. I don't know if anybody else has it, um, but uh, I have it and I use it every once in a while. It is uh, essentially just uh, gives you a notification and you take a picture of what you're doing in the moment. It also takes a picture of you know, your face as well. And uh, this was actually a, a reference image from not entirely, I changed a few things, but the selfie was a reference from one of my friends on Be Real. I asked her, hey, can I do a painting of this Be Real and kind of like change it a little bit? And she was all for it. So I got to do a portrait of her and I kind of changed uh, the what the back camera was showing, uh, showing a forest fire. It kind of, it, this piece was kind of made when I started seeing notifications and news articles and um, scientific lectures and data suggesting how how dire it is for us to kind of change what's going on with the planet um, through climate change and how easy it is with this little electric electronic rectangle in your in your pocket to be completely dismissive of that to be completely um, unaware of some of the severity of like what's going on. Um, and so this was kind of a way that I felt like I could call into attention um, my own lack of attention and others' lack of attention on certain subjects. This is another piece in the show. It's probably my favorite piece in the show. I absolutely love this piece. Uh, the idea for this kind of came while I was making the work. Um, so it's kind of like in, in the middle section of 
of rendering his face when I kind of had this idea of taking this idea of digital content that we continue to consume and ingest and kind of making a play on that where it's kind of like grocery items. So like he's reaching into this grocery bag and he's got this receipt with all of the pieces of content that he has purchased with his own attention and time. Um, I felt like this was really significant because especially during the pandemic, I felt like I completely got addicted to watching videos and like doing literally nothing else. Uh, binging TV shows, playing video games, um, texting my friends, which is not bad, by the way, sorry, <laughs> texting my friends is not bad, I don't know why I said that. Um, but, uh, you know, um, realizing that a lot of my time was being spent elsewhere, um, how it affected my mood, my health, my um, ability to get literally anything done, and it was a fun project to work on. I. It was my first kind of attempt at doing kind of a fisheye view on a, on a painting, and I felt like it, it came out nice. I didn't really know kind of how to do it, but I figured it out, I guess. Um, it was one of my favorites. And uh, he's really excited, by the way, that this piece is in the show. I think he lives in New York, but uh, so he can't make it, but he's super, super stoked about that. Um, this piece is also in the show. Um, this piece has a pretty heavy significance to me because I really feel like the plague of this idea of Christian nationalism that is unfortunately on the rise in this country is completely muting and blindsiding um, the original teachings of the gospel. Um, I grew up in the Catholic faith and while I've mostly deconstructed a lot of my faith and fell kind of far from community because of some of these social issues. I do have a belief in the, the love and the perfection that Jesus showed all people. And this fascination kind of circumnavigated itself into what I started, you know, kind of creating. And while a lot of my work is very fixated on Western religion and United States as a whole, I really find that it's important that we have these conversations surrounding what it means for people to truly have freedom of religion, um, for people to choose what religion they see fit, what they want to practice, the absence of a religion, um, allowing people to live their lives and not be um, ostracized. And this piece was really interesting to make. Uh, I had this digital painting that I did of the stained glass window. Uh, had this idea, the crazy idea, to put it on to some sort of plastic or plexiglass or acrylic and get it printed as kind of a life-size you know, stained glass window. Um, I found a local printer that printed this on a five and a half by three and a half foot sheet of acrylic and a really good friend of mine, Noah Freeman, created a white box for me to exhibit it as it is able to be backlit um, and hang on the wall. So super, super thankful for all of his help. It truly was a group effort. This image would have been just digital if not the, the help of all the people that you know, helped me kind of achieve it. So um, with that, I'll let you guys, uh, you know, Enjoy the show, enjoy hanging out with people, and um, I'm super appreciative if you guys showed up. It's like really cool to have a show outside of the state of Arkansas, outside the state of Indiana. Um, and I'm, again, I'm just so thankful for Jonathan and Gabby and Par Projects for putting this on. It's um, truly a blessing, so thank you. Mm -hmm.